Okay, so this is the last. It's only two-day unit. Just wanted to do a little bit about counting, and then today is going to be a little bit about sets and some basic probability rules that will help you. Uh, tomorrow in class, you'll have a chance to ask any questions that you have and then actually work on day three in class uh, so that you don't have anything to worry about Wednesday except the take-home quiz, which I'll hand out to you. Make sure you pick it up before you leave, and then you can do it and turn it in on Thursday. Yes? Do you know we're done Thursday morning in summer? Thursday morning? No, I do not know. Okay. So, first, let's talk about some notations, okay? Um, hopefully you did this in geometry a little bit. If you have a letter A and letter B, this means that we have two sets. We have some stuff that's in set A some stuff that's in set B. When you see the U, that means union, which we typically refer to as or. Okay? Kevin, turn in your phone. When you see A upside down U, B, that means intersection, which we usually call and in math. Okay? Um... If you see a set with a little, what looks like an apostrophe, we call this a complement. This just means whatever is not in A. And if we saw B complement, that's not in B. This is really all the notation that you need to know in order to be able to answer the basic set questions. Um, Here is an example. We'll do two sets examples. So let's say set A... In set B, we have 3, 4, 5, 1 and 2 in the middle part, and then we have the numbers 8 and 9. Okay? Let's write out what is in set A. So what numbers do we have in set A? So this is how you list the elements in the set. You just literally list everything in there with commas. And you have the fancy little brackets to indicate that it's a set. What would set B consist of? One, two, eight, nine. One, two, eight, nine. Good. The order really doesn't, doesn't matter. No. As long as they're there, that's all we care about. Okay, so now here are some questions that we should be able to answer. What is the set A intersect B look like, or what does it mean? So like which ones are in the middle? One yeah, two. one and two. It just means, tell me what is both in A and B. That's clearly just the number one and the number two, and that would be it. Make sense? What about A or B? Are you other ones? One, two, three, four, five, I heard. Eight, and eight, nine. Very good. It just means tell me what numbers are in A or what numbers are in B. That just means literally all of them. Okay? The way I remember too, union is think marriage. You're just marrying all of the things and that's it. So everything that you see should be part of the union. Does that make sense? Okay? What about a complement. What would that have? Eight Very good. And if I did B complement, what would those be? Three, four, five. Very good. Okay. Uh, if you see directions that say something about roster form, that's what we just did here, where we list everything that's in the set. This is called roster form. Okay, so the directions might say, tell us what is in set B. List your answer in roster form. This is what we did. Okay, let's do another example. Oh, and I didn't make this clear, but what is this called? That's a Venn diagram. I know you guys have seen them before, but in case you forgot the name, a Venn diagram is any picture that has sets 
either overlapping or not overlapping. It doesn't matter. Okay. <coughs> Let's try this one. Well, for that problem, yeah. Let's say we have 20 students surveyed. Here were the results. Eight like math. Five like English. And three like both. You should have the skill set to look at a scenario like this and draw and label a Venn diagram based on the information. That's not 20 students, though. You're right, it's not 20 students. Let's see what this means. So we have one circle, which should represent what? The number, or the number of students that liked math. Another one that represents the number of students that liked English. So now here's how we fill this in. Always, always, always start with the overlap, the middle part. Okay? How many liked both? Three. Three. Now, if I tell you that eight like math, that means that in the math circle there should be a total of eight. So that means that there should be what in here? Five. Excellent. So five liked math only, three happen to like both math and English. Does that make sense? Uh, so then what goes in here in the... Good. So that's only ten. five, three is eight, two. That's only ten so far. So what does that mean if there's 20 students surveyed and only 10 are <coughs> in here? Yeah, 10 are out here and say, I, I don't like school, so I don't like anything. That's their attitude, right? So they're over here, they don't like any class. Or at least not math or English. Okay? Okay, so now I can ask you some questions. If we put a little N... in front of the set notation, all this means is how many? This just means tell me the number of elements that are in this set. Well, how many elements are in the intersection of M and E? Three. This isn't so hard, right? What about the number of elements in the set that's not E? intersected with M. <coughs> so what does that tell you to do? First, we're ignoring E, and we're also combining that with M. Should I do some colors here? Let's see. Not E would be that, right? No, that's, that's an M. Oh, yeah. Not E would be all of the M that's not in E, right? And then everything on the outside, too, is not E. And now this is saying, let's do an and, list everything that's in the green, but also in M. So that would be five, yes. Yes? No, when you like both, it's assumed that you're a member of the liking math party. So it's like, if you happen to like both and you were asked, do you like math, what would you say? Yes. And if you happen to like both and you were asked, do you like English, you'd say yes. Which puts you in the middle here, which represents liking both of them. But also contributes to the total that's eight total people like math and five total people like English. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't what be fifty? Because we're intersecting this with M. That means that we're looking for the number of students that do not like English, but like math. Or do not like English and like math. These ten out here don't like math, so we can't count them. Does that make sense? <coughs> Erica, bless you.
because this is 8 and 2, that's 10 total. And if 20 people were surveyed, that means that there's 10 people out here that don't like either of them. Yes. Well, no, because it, I'm just counting them once. 5 plus 3 oh, plus oh, 2. Okay. If we just count it like this, 8, 5, 3, then you're counting it twice. Yeah, because you're counting the 3 in here and in here. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but when you have it drawn out in a Venn diagram, you literally just count up every section. Then. Okay. okay? Yes? How do you figure that out? Figure what out? How is this like not 10 and what happens to the E? It's not E. So think about all the people that don't like English. How many are there? 15 total. But now we only want to include those that don't like English and they like math, though. So that would just be the 5 in the math circle. That's, that's it. I don't know how else to explain it. Yes? Let's do that. So the same thing, but inter, or a union now, right? So this means, tell me how many people don't like English or they like math. So that means what? How many people are in the not English section? And, uh, or I should say, in the math section. So total, 15. Because, remember, a union means that you're marrying all the elements together. So if we're talking about what's not an E, what's not an E is 10. And if we're talking about what's an M, there's, there's 5 that are in M. Oh, but now this is a union, right? So I should include everything that's in M, because we're going to literally marry all the stuff that's in M with all the stuff that's not in E. <coughs> so how many is that? It's not 15, it's, it's 18. Yes. Yes. And it has to be an M. Okay. Exactly. Erica. Okay, so would there be any way to write it where you would get the answer 15? Where you would get the answer 15? Yeah, so like, is, like, is that possible? Like, is that possible? Like, is that possible? You'd have to do like an intersection or an or with, combine an or and an and together. Okay, but like what we just learned, like the, like the for the union and stuff like that, it would, like if Right, it if it's just two, no. Jack. I don't see how that... 18 instead of 15 because, because union means we're going to combine everything in both sets. But it says not English in the both is. How many are not in English? There's 15 not in English. And now we're going to bring everybody else that's in math. But we've already included <coughs> the five, right? So who else do we need to bring along? The three that are in the middle. So that makes 18. Union means just tell me everything that's in everything that I'm talking about. So the M there is basically a separate criteria. You were saying, who's in math? 18 people would raise their hand. Who likes math? No. Or that, no. yes. Who likes math? You would say eight people would raise their hand. Who doesn't care? Oh. And who also likes math? Who's not in English? That'd be the ten. That'd be the ten. You ask who likes okay. English, okay. and whoever doesn't like right. math, that's who you can count. Okay. Or, but what if the people in the middle say? Think, okay, let me do different colors. The ten on the outside. So this. 
blue, that's overlap with green, that's what part of this? Not English. That's not English, right? How many are in the not English part? And then five in the just that part. So right, so we also should, because this is still not English, right? So there's 15 here. Right. Now, how many are in the math? Eight. But we've already counted five of them, because they were included in the not English party, right? Right. So then what's left? Just the, Just the three lines. here. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. What's the question? Oh, no. wait. Okay, so if it was just like the end and then the beautiful thing. Never mind. Like this? Yeah. So that would represent. That would be. Tell me how many people. Do not like math. Okay. And you would say, now that we complicated the picture, <laughs> you ignore all the people in the math circle. Including the one in the middle, right? You would ignore the one in the okay. middle. So, so the answer would be 12. For this one, yes. Kevin. Uh, I'm just scratching. Scratching? Stretching. Oh, stretching. <clears throat> okay. Wait, why is it 160? Why is what what? The number in the middle. What is it? Oh, it's M. M. Yeah. This was asking how many people do not like math, and we said, well, eight people do, so that means twelve don't. Okay. Any other sets questions? I mean, look, the stuff that you have to know about sets is pretty basic. If you can build a Venn diagram like this, where and, I mean, here's the key that you need to remember, right? Start with the overlap section. If, if you know how many like both, or if there's more than two, if there's three, and you start in that little bubble in the middle where all of them meet, then you can piece your way around and label all the different sections. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's do a little bit of probability. Probability means, in general, the number of desired outcomes over the total number of outcomes. <clears throat> now, it can get pretty complicated, but it could also be pretty basic. We'll do some examples, and then we'll clarify some things. Let's say we roll two die, two six-sided die, and we want to know what the probability is. So probability is that both are the same. So if you roll two die, we want to know what the probability is that they both have the same number showing. What's that? It is. How did you get that? Two divided by twelve. How did you get two and how did you get twelve? Uh-huh. Right. It's actually 36. <laughs> 6 out of 36. So, you got the right answer. Unfortunately, you kind of got lucky. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's two ways that you can do it. You can actually write out all the outcomes if you don't see them. Or if you know that the first die has six outcomes, and the second die has six outcomes. 
6 times 6 means that there's 36 total outcomes. Does that make sense? And then you're looking for the ones where they're all the same, so you can count that. 1, 1, 2, 2, so there's going to be 6 of them. Yes? Okay, so what is the probability that both are the same? 1 out of 36? 1 out of, one out of 6. Oh. And here's, I mean, I'll just list it. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. These are all the outcomes. Sure, why not? Doesn't take too long. This will help those that are more visual. Sorry for the sloppy numbers. But these are all 36 possibilities, right? So if I'm using the definition, total number of outcomes is the denominator. That's 36. And now how many of these are the same? So that's... Oh, I thought it said, like, roll both twos. Then that would be... Roll two six-sided die. What's the probability that both are the same? Okay. So we see why it's six out of 36, which is one-sixth. Because those are the ones where they're the same. Okay. I'm beginning to wonder about you. I don't wonder about many people, but. Ask us Eleven twenty-two. Okay. Let's try this. Probability of, if you have a deck of cards, probability of choosing or picking one ace. Do we know how many cards are in the deck? 52. Do we know how many aces are in the deck? Four. Done. One out of 13. Make sense? That's it. Well, yeah. Total number of desired outcomes, there's four aces that will help me out of 52, so one out of 13. If it said red ace, then it would be two out of 52. If it said specifically the ace of hearts, now it's just one out of 52. Yep. All right, let's talk about multiple events. There's two ways to combine events, and again, we're just keeping things basic. You can use or, or the word and, okay? And again, this is the very cheap version, and we can go into a lot more details, but or generally means add, and and generally means multiply, okay? The only thing you need to remember with the or, so probability of A or B, which is the same as probability of A union B. And actually this formula will make a lot of sense because Erica was talking about double counting earlier. Let's check this out. What is my Venn diagram? So let's say we have... Uh, this scenario again, and I want to count how many things are in A or B, right? So here's, here's the premise for the formula. First, I can count how many things are in A, so you would say what? Five. There's five things in A. Then I would count, well, how many things are in B? You would say four, but we just counted two of them twice. Does that make sense? So the formula would be you take the probability that it's in A plus the probability that it's in B, but if there's any chance that stuff gets double counted, you subtract those out. That's what P intersection, or I'm sorry, A intersection B represents. Okay? Sometimes you don't need this. For example, if I said, we can just do this real quick and I'll do a specific example. What's the probability that if I have cards again, that I get a red card? 
or a black card? 152 out of 52. Right. What are the red cards? How many? 26 out of 52. Plus, how many black cards? 26 out of 52. And then we would subtract any cards that are both red and black, which we would say, well, there's none of them, so we don't have to worry about it, right? But, let's say I did this problem. If I pick one card, what's the probability that I get an ace or a spade? So we would say, well, I'm going to add the probability that it's an ace plus the probability that it's a spade. And now, is there such a thing as the ace, a card that's an ace and a spade? So ace and spade, absolutely. So in this case, we do subtract, and now we just plug everything in. How many aces are there? Four out of 52. How many spades? 13 out of 52. And now, are there any ace of spades? So we subtract 1 out of 52, and we get 17 minus 1 is 16 out of 52, 8 out of 26, 4 out of 13, I believe, if you reduce that. Well, then we would subtract too many times. Think of it this way. If you want to get an ace or a spade, right, you could, I mean, technically you don't have to do this formula if you just count and visualize the deck of cards, right? How many aces are there? Four. Four. And now how many spades are there that don't already help me? If there's four aces, right, and I say, well, now how many spades are there that don't already help me? There's 12, right? Because one of those aces was already counted in the... One of those spades was already counted in the ace group. Does that make sense? So no matter how you think about it, you should get 16 total. Okay? Um, let's do... And... What's the probability that if I draw cards that I get three kings in a row, and let's assume that this one is with replacement, meaning that I have a deck of cards, right there, I have a deck of cards, I want to pick a king, put it back in the deck, shuffle them up, draw another card, get another king, put it back in the deck, shuffle them up, and get a third king in a row. Well, let's figure it out. How many kings are there? Four out of 52. Notice I didn't write it this way, but this could be written as getting a king and then another king and then a third king. Notice I'm using the word and, right? Which means to multiply your probabilities. If I'm putting it, everything back into the deck, then this doesn't change. It's just 4 out of 52 every time. Yes, because we're drawing a card three times. So whatever that is, 1 out of 13, three times. Anyone help me out here? 13 times 13 is 169. Another 13. What do we get when we do this? 2,197. 2,197? Okay, yes? Okay, so if you have like the same problem but without replacement, would that Hold that thought. And? Seven. Without replacement? So same scenario. Okay, that's the one where you like take one away from the Yeah, so that would be so same question without replacement would look like this. Four out of fifty-two. But now the next time I draw a card, there's only three uh, kings left and only 51 cards left in the deck. Does that answer your question? And then if I wanted to draw a third king in a row, now there's 2 out of 50, so help me out here. What's this going to be? Mm -hmm. 
looking for a final answer here, guys. One out of? Five thousand five One out of 5,000. Five twenty-five. We're not. We're only doing three cards, not four. Okay. Let's try a couple more. Someone close the door because I have till seventeen, right? Okay, that's all I need is about four minutes. Well, you don't have a choice. You could, but then that wouldn't be very respectful, would it? And you're not a disrespectful young man, I know that. Okay, what's the probability that if I flip a coin, I get three tails in a row? So, is this an and scenario or an or scenario? This is and, because I'm flipping a coin once, hoping to get tails, and then I'm flipping it again, hoping to get tails, and then I'm flipping it a third time, hoping to get tails, right? So it's one half for the first flip. Are we any more or less likely to get tails a second time? It's still one and two, right? Each time, so yes, the answer is one eighth. Another example. What if we flip three coins? So three coins, uh, let me write it out. So three coins are tossed. What's the probability that we have exactly two heads? Okay, so let me explain using ands and ors and why we shouldn't do it that way. If I want exactly two heads, I could flip head and head and tail. Multiply, 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 right? Or, so now we add head and tail and head. Do you see what I'm saying? Or, or tail, and head. tail and head and head. And that just gets... Too complicated. Well, it's not too bad, but it's more work than it needs to be. Since we're only flipping three coins, you could just write out all the outcomes. So if you can draw it and it's not hard, I'd recommend doing that. So let's say I have heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads. How would you get heads, heads, heads? Okay. I'm just listing all the outcomes out first. I'm just listing all the outcomes out first. I haven't talked about the specific ones yet. Uh, what else can I do? Heads, tails, heads, tails, tails. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. And there's one more I'm forgetting. Tails, tails, tails. tails, tails, tails. Out of these eight, we want exactly two. So that's one, two, three, and that's it. So the answer would be... 3 out of 8, which is what you would get if you did it the long way with ands and ors, multiplying and adding and multiplying and adding. But if you can draw it, it's a little easier. There's Last thing you need to know is complements. And it all comes from this formula. If I have the probability of something happening plus the probability of something not happening, what should that add up to? Once. Yes. So think about what's the probability that I get heads plus the probability that I don't get heads. That'd be like one half plus one half, which is one, right? This formula gives you a nice shortcut. What would the probability of A not happening be then? One minus, one minus the probability of A happening. Okay, we can touch more on this tomorrow, but sometimes this formula helps you avoid counting too many things, and it might be useful. Day two is homework? Day two is homework, yes.